Hey, this is Math 6, Unit 2, Lesson 13, Tables and Double Number Line Diagrams. All right, we began, first of all, with some number talks, finding some quotients mentally. And so we take a look at 150, dividing that by 2. And so I usually, when I think of 150, I guess I'm always thinking of $1.50. And I know that half of that is going to be 75, okay? So that's how I get that one there mentally myself. Now, when I do dividing it by 4, that means I'm going to cut this in half again which is a little trickier to do just kind of a mental math. So I know just, just with some practice that's 37.5, uh, not necessarily 50, but 37.5. And then if I'm doing this in by eights, then I'm cutting this in half again. So half of 37, um, you know, 37.50 in a sense, like money, becomes 18.75. Those are some weird numbers to have there, but it does, it does work out okay. Can I do those same quotients on the number line? Sure. We could cut this whole thing in half and do a number here at 75. We can cut 75 in half and do 37.5. And I can cut that in half and do 18.75. Those all work just fine. But I can also recognize that this is going to be 150 over 2. This is going to be 150 over 4. And this is 150 over 8 as a fraction way of looking at that quotient, what that's going to be. Okay, so this kind of depends on what you see, what you do. Some of the numbers you can probably do mentally and have no problem with. Other ones get a little funnier. And these are a little bit funnier numbers once you get past the 75. We start working with decimals and mental math there. That's okay. Let's take a look at the activity for the day. Today's activity says moving 3,000 meters. So we begin with, it says the other day we saw that Han can run 100 meters in 20 seconds. Way to go. Han wonders how long it would take him to run 3,000 meters at this rate. All right, so do you agree with this table of equivalent ratios that he made? Now we know that Han can run in 20 seconds, so this is 20 seconds, 20 seconds, he can run 100 meters. So do we agree with this table? 20 to 100. Let's take a look. To go from 20 to 10 is going to be times a half, 100 times a half, is 50, that looks okay. To go from 10 to 1 is going to be multiplying by 1 tenth. 50 to 5, that's indeed multiplying by 1 tenth, that all looks good. And to go from 1 to 3,000 is times 3,000. So in terms of the math there, that looks okay, but notice this is 3,000 seconds, okay? He wants to know how long it takes to run 3,000 meters at that rate. That's his goal there. So in one sense, sure, the table works. There's nothing wrong with a table, but it's not going to help him solve the question that he has. His question is, what happens, how many seconds will it take to get to 3,000 meters? That's the question he actually wants to answer, is what goes into that box. This will give him a totally different set, a, a, a number there, won't it, right? Okay, so on number two, it says complete the last row. Okay, well, sure, let's do it. To go from 1 to 3,000 is times 3,000. So to go from 5 to whatever that goes in that box, we'll take 3,000, multiply it by 5, and we end up with 15,000. So what does that tell us? It says that in 3,000 seconds, he can go 15,000 meters. That's great information, I guess, but it wasn't what he wanted to know. He wants to know how far will it take to go 3,000 meters. That's what he wants to do there. So what could he do? Well, a couple things. We can maybe look at the 100 and say, do I know how to go from 100 to 3,000? Sure, 100 to 3,000 is by multiplying by 30. Can I do 20 times 30? Sure, I can. 20 times 30 is going to be 0, and this is 0, and 6. We end up with 600. So it actually would take him 600 uh, seconds to go 3,000 meters. All right, let's look at the questions. Though. Number three says, what question about the situation does this number answer? Well, we just said, it tells me how far, uh, how many meters he can run in 3,000 seconds, okay? What can you do to improve his table? He could put the 3,000 in the meter column, which is what we did, and then solve from there. Number five, it says that Priya can bike 150 meters in 20 seconds. So let's go here, we'll put meters here. 
let's put seconds here okay and she can go 150 meters in 20 seconds at this rate how long would it take her to bike 3,000 meters so we want to get this to 3,000 somehow okay well knowing about some mental math I know 150 times 2 can get me to 300 so 20 times 2 is 40 and I like that because I know that 300 times 10 can get me to 3,000 so 40 times 10 is 400 so how long would it take her it would take her 400 seconds okay all right, and I'm actually going to skip number six. I played with it for a while and was looking for kind of a, a nice way of setting this up by using what we know so far, and I just couldn't see w what needed to happen there. It could have been because I was watching too much soccer on TV and wasn't focusing well. I don't know, but I'm going to skip it for now and move on to activity number three, which is on the International Space Station. In this activity, it says that the International Space Station orbits around the Earth at a constant speed. Your teacher will give you either a double number line or a table that represents the situation. Your partner will get the other one, and you want to complete the parts of representation with your partner and share the information, and then find out what is the speed of the International Space Station, and then we'll see what happens here. So, what that means is you got something that looks a little bit like this, All right? Here's what you have. Either you have a table or you have the double number line. And what we want to do is we want to complete the table and the double number line working together to figure out uh, the speed of the International Space Station. All right, so here we go from 10 to 1. To go from 10 to 1, we are multiplying by 1 tenth. To go from 80 to whatever goes in here, we multiply 1 tenth. And 80 divided by 10 is going to be 8. So in one second, it can go 8 whatever it's going to be. Over here it shows me it's kilometers. So let's put kilometers right here because it helps me know what's going to be happening here. So on my double number line, if I'm working my partner, I know that when I'm going, um, in this case here, I can see my time is 5. So I have a time now of 1. That goes here. And in one second we're going 8 kilometers there. What else do I notice? I have five, six, I have seven right here for time, eight, nine, ten, and in ten, based upon the table, we're going eighty, right? I don't have numbers here for five and seven, so let's see what we can do here. If my time is five, I'll put five on the table. To go from one to five is multiplying by five, so I can go eight times five, and that gives me forty. So let's put this here and go five, and 40 right there and let's do the last one which is 7 so to go from 1 to 7 you can go 1 to 7 is times 7 so 8 times 7 is 56 so using the different pieces that you have with your partner you should end up with a table that looks something like that and a double number line that looks something like that in terms of how fast it's going, it travels eight kilometers every second. That's the speed that it travels there. Um, that's what you got, okay? So that's it for there. Let's take a look at your summary of today's lesson. Summary of today's lesson. All right, it says on a double number line, we put labels in front of a line to tell where to go, or we put labels on top of a column. So on columns were up top and double number lines were there. It's important to put those in the right place so we can see what's going on. And then keep in mind that both double number lines and tables help us use multiplication to make equivalent ratios. Okay, but they are different in the way they're doing it. Number or on a double number line they're listed in order. That's the way that works. It has to go in order. But in a table, table um, you can put it in any order you want, okay? So just keep that in mind as you're working with these on your homework assignment. Let's pause there, get your homework out, and we'll come back and check it together in just a moment. All right, so here's our homework. It says the double number line shows how much water and how much lemonade powder to mix to make different amounts of lemonade. Make a table to represent the situation. All right. So we're going to have a table, we're going to make a label, we'll have water, 
on one side and we can have our powder on the other. All right, and we know that we have for two cups of water, we have 1.5 scoops of powder. For four cups of water, we have three scoops of powder. And for six cups of water, we have 4.5. So there's a table, and that's all you had to do. <laughs> okay, simple as that. Just basically being able to show that these two things are the same idea. All right, number two. A bread recipe uses three tablespoons of olive oil for every two cloves of crushed garlic. So there's three olive oil, two garlic. Complete the table to show the different sized batches of bread that taste the same as the recipe. And then we're gonna draw a double number line for the same thing and decide which one we like better. Okay, let's do it. So first of all, we could, they wanted to go ahead and switch the oil from three to one. So to go to, from three to one, we're multiplying by a third. So to go to two to here, we'll multiply two times one third, which is gonna be two thirds. So in a sense, our basic rate is one olive oil for every two thirds, every two thirds uh, crushed garlic cloves. So from here, because I have a one, I can simply go one times two for there. And here we can go two thirds times two to give us four thirds right there. They go from one to five, we multiply by five. So let's multiply this one by five. So we'll do two thirds times five and we end up with 10 thirds. And then to go to 10, we multiply by 10. So multiply here by 10. So 2 thirds times 10 becomes 20 thirds. I could rewrite those as mixed numbers or something else. It doesn't really make a huge difference. This is 1 and 1 third. 3 goes in here 3 times. So we have 3 and 1 third. And 3 goes into that one 6 times. So we have 6 and 2 thirds. So if you want to write a little differently, you certainly could. Now, to make that in a double number line, we can make a line like here and here. We can have our olive oil we can have our garlic okay and we know our olive oil we have one two three five so I can have a one two three skip the four here's the five six seven eight nine ten we got a way out here for ten and then we put our lines here for our crushed garlic and three goes with two one goes with two thirds two goes with one and one third, five goes with three and one third, and 10 goes with six and two thirds. All right, so there's our double number line. Does it work? Sure it does. Does it work as nicely as a table? Eh, I don't know, I'm not a fan of it. I prefer the table. I can quickly see what to multiply by my multiplier and get the missing numbers that I need. It works the same here once I get it, but it just it's more cumbersome to draw and write. It's just faster for me to draw a table real quick and just do it. This helps me see what I'm talking about, but that's a, a simpler setup for me. All right, number three says, Claire drives travels at a constant speed as shown in the double number line. Let's look at, let's look at that. At this rate, how far does she travel in each of these intervals of time and explain or show your reasoning. So how far does she travel in each of the intervals? All right, so we have our basic travel and stuff here. We can see how far she goes in two hours. We can see we want to find out one hour, three hour, and 6.5 hours. So the best thing to do would be to start with the one hour one. One hour can be found by saying if this is two, let's cut that in half and say that's one. And what's half of 72? 36, right? So we're multiplying this by a half times a half and gets us there. So we know that she can go 36 miles in one hour. From there, the rest are pretty straightforward. Three hours would be what? 36 hours, or 36 miles times three. We end up with three times three is nine, plus one is 10, we have 108 for three hours. For 6.5 hours, we do 36 hours, uh, 36 miles in one hour times 6.5 hours. So we have 30, 15, 18, we have 36, and we have 18, 19, 20, 21. Add them up, and we have two, three, four, one decimal there. So we have 234, oops, 234 miles in 6.5 hours. All right, awesome. Next one, number four. Lynn and Diego travel in cars on the highway at constant speeds. In each case, decide who is traveling faster and explain how you know. 
key thing of this problem is it says in each case. There are two cases. There's case A and case B. So in case A, it says during the first half of an hour, Lynn traveled 23 miles and Diego travels 25 miles. So in this case, the time is the same, but the distance is different, right? So in this case, it's like setting a stopwatch and after 30 minutes, well, who went further? Diego went further. Diego went 25 miles in 30 minutes, which means Diego's going faster than Lynn in that first part, okay? Because they went the same distance, I'm sorry, the same time, and he went further. Now in B, it says after stopping for lunch, they travel at different speeds. So forget that one, at different speeds now. To travel the next 60 miles, it takes Lynn 65 minutes and Diego 70 minutes. So now this time, the distance is the same, but the time is different, right? So they're going from here to here, right? And Lynn gets there in 65 minutes, and then Diego gets here in 70 minutes, which means that Lynn got there faster than Diego did. So in the first example, we see that Diego is faster. In the second example, we see that Lynn is faster. Number five, or five, actually number, yeah, five. Sorry, it's a little, mine's a little messed up. Six is here, so five. A sports recipe drink calls for five thirds tablespoons of powdered drink for every 12 ounces of water. How many batches can you make with five tablespoons of drink mix and 36 ounces of water? So these are, first of all, I don't tell you, are gonna be equivalent ratios. It's set like this. This is our powder, and here's our water. Think of it like this. Our powder is five thirds, and our water is 12, okay? And we're gonna have a multiplier to make this become five tablespoons and 36. That's our multiplier we're trying to find out. So what's our multiplier? Our multiplier would be the batches. So you could think about what's it take to go from five thirds to five, or think about what it takes to go from 12 to 36, okay? Well, I know 12 times three is 36. That's okay. Is five thirds times three equal to five? That you may not know in your head, but let's take a look here. What is 5 thirds times 3? Well, 3 is like 3 over 1. Cancel that out, and we're left with 5. So, yep, it works. So, how many batches would you make? You would make 3 batches. And our last one here, review from the first unit. Here's a cube with a unit length of 1 for each one of the little squares. What's the surface area? Surface area is going to be what that is times six faces. So we have surface area is one, we have a three by three, which is gonna be nine for each face, right? Nine for each face, and there are six faces. So we have 54 square, oops, square units there. The volume is gonna be the length times the height times the width. So it's three times three times three. Three times three is nine, nine times three is 27. So we have 27 cubic units for part B for the volume of that square. All right, that's it for today. We will see you next time.